What's up, my home diggity diggity dogs? Um, remind me to never do that again. Hope you're doing well. I am now back home. I was at the Football Manager World Cup in Liverpool for a week. Turns out I ended up streaming over 11 hours a day. Uh, and then that was on top of recording other types of content. So I just didn't get around to having the opportunity to record Zealandisms while I was there. I'm obviously sorry about that. Uh, if you can ever forgive me, I promise to always at least explain myself. Good news is a lot of shit happened. Uh, but we're going to get to that after I talk about the Football Manager World Cup that I was at. I realize not everybody that watches this channel might be super into that. But I promise you I'll at least make this uh, mildly interesting. Because... I went into this week, uh, uh, the main channel, you know, we make a ton of football manager videos. I stream football manager a lot of the time. Football manager in many ways is is my life, right? For better or worse, I at least spend a lot of time in the game. Uh, when I got invited to be a part of a football manager World Cup that was kind of hosted and run by FIFA, I was understandably skeptical, right? Like I was looking at it and I'm going, uh, I mean, not 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 for the least of which, a football manager as an esport is something that came off as very weird to me. If you're familiar with the game of football manager in the first place, it's definitely not a game where PvP is like front and center, right? It is a game where a ton of people play it. And, and I guess, you know, people have competitive farming simulators, so it shouldn't be that weird. But it's not a game that lends itself to, like, there's not a natural way to make it competitive. And they, uh, they'd called me beforehand to tell me the format. And I remember when I heard the format, I went, oh, that's, that's good. You know, the idea was that you'd play three seasons and, uh, you know, start at the same club that everybody else in your group started at. And you, uh, that's a pretty good way to determine who's better at football manager than somebody else, right? Because you are, you know, they, they're, you've removed a lot of the variables by saying we're starting with the exact same team and the exact same save file and, so on and so forth. But I had no idea what it was going to be until I got there. And, and I was complete. I, I can't. I don't think I can properly express to you how blown away I was by the setup and by the amount of money they'd spent on production. At which point I immediately decided I was going to do everything in my power in the main YouTube channel, on Twitter, on, on Twitch. Um I was going to do everything in my power to try and let people know about it. Because I knew if people knew about it, then they would immediately become interested because of the just raw visual appeal of the entire thing. I mean, I'm, I, I think their budget was over a million dollars for this. I don't know what it was. I never heard a number. Uh, but the, the, there was a you know an entire crew of roadies there putting up multiple giant sets. There was an entire media day for all of these guys, these managers who, by the way, had qualified for this tournament. Um, the it, you know member nations were invited. Nineteen nations showed up to participate. Twenty uh, twenty teams, a second team from the host nation, England. And they all got to go through this like kind of picture taking process. And I mean, if you've ever been a part of these types of large scale tournaments before or, or, or you know, any sort of large scale event like this, I mean, they, 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 it was almost like the managers were getting processed. They were getting processed into this kind of massive machine that was designed to make them look as good as possible. And it would, the contrast was hilarious because the vast majority of these guys had never created content in any serious way before. Like they weren't streamers, they weren't YouTubers. They're just guys that like to play FM. That for whatever you know, one reason or another, they read a news article, they saw a Reddit post, they saw a tweet. Right, they found out that their nation was holding some sort of qualifying that they were able to apply to be a part of, and they ended up at this tournament. So that whole dynamic was really cool. Watching these guys all of a sudden be recognized for their talents, and it it, it is amazing to me to watch football manager be given that sort of attention because even for me somebody that plays the game all the time it was not something that i i felt out of place right i can't even me I, I can't even imagine how all of these guys felt right like i'm looking at all of this setup i'm looking at all of the stuff i'm looking at the the sets and the 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 you know the backgrounds they have for all these photo shoots and i'm thinking i don't know if football manager deserves this so they go through that giant first day and right when i walk in to do my you know media hits and whatever because i was there to stream the whole thing the u.s didn't send a team i was just there 
uh, to create content around the event, which I did, obviously, to the tune of streams. But that first day, dude, walking in, seeing all that, feeling honestly like Football Manager didn't even didn't even deserve that. I was hoping Football Manager would rise to the occasion. And the concerns I had about Football Manager being a viable esport were still very much there. It, it, in my opinion, if you're going to have a viable esport, you need the ability even though obviously all games have rng football manager has a lot of rng right you need the ability to create a noticeable skill gap right and we don't know how sustainable a football manager competitive ecosystem is going to be going forward but within this tournament amongst a, a ton of players that were very good at football manager that had managed to win sometimes qualifying tournaments that included over a hundred people there was a skill gap between those managers, right? There were teams that were able to distinguish themselves. Uh, there were teams that were able to consistently achieve crazier things. And, it, and they were playing also, this is kind of the second side note, they were playing at such a high level where almost nobody in the tournament was like bad, right? Not, not necessarily bad. Nobody got fired, Nobody, right? People were making cup runs and winning stuff. But no, everybody in the tournament, even the people at the bottom of the group were accomplishing a lot. Right, they were actually managing to put on, you know, put amazing results together that the average person would oogle at. For example, in Group C, uh, which they were managing Sporting, Team England, led by Work the Space, a YouTuber around Football Manager, produced a team that played. Oh, you know, you played three seasons. So in his last two seasons, in 68 league matches, he won 66 of them and drew the other two. Like just I, I types of seasons that I have never produced in Football Manager. I've never done that. Like that is so absolutely psycho, off the wall, insanely good uh, that I can't even be like. That's unbelievable. Finished fourth out of five in the group because he just got FM to high hell going into the European knockouts. Now, obviously, right, there is there is a certain element of RNG to that, right? And in Group C, obviously, the you know, Team England was denied by that. But when you hear that the team that won the group made two Champions League finals in three years, right, they made a European final every season. Won the Europa League, lost the Champions League final on penalties, and then won the Champions League final. That was Team Indonesia. That's the team that won that group. And, oh, of course, they won the league all three seasons, the same as England, who finished fourth. You see the skill gap I'm talking about, right? Because England, for whatever, you know, all of its brilliant performances in that group in the league and so on, it, it could not find a way to cancel out the RNG of the round of 16. I'm saying cancel out the RNG, by the way, because I talked to the manager of South Africa who won his group and he, he was basically talking about how the tournament felt less like proving you were good at football manager and more about finding the specific tactics for specific times where you would be able to cancel out the RNG, which if that's the way to create the skill gap in football manager, that's great. But whether it was Indonesia, whether it was Germany who are in group A and literally picked up every single possible point in the scoring system that you could pick up, which is just absolutely insane. They won the Club World Cup season two out of Japan. I, I mean, oh, sorry, like had two and a half seasons in Japan. They literally went and won the Club World Cup, won the Asian Champions League first time of asking, literally just won everything. Uh, like absolutely crazy performance out of them. And then you could see the levels develop over the course of the tournament, which was really awesome. And then he got into the final, which I didn't actually get to stream the final. I promised I would make a Zealandism about the Football Manager World Cup. So I guess here it is. Uh, the final was almost a little disappointing because there wasn't as much drama as you'd hope for, but anybody that has ever watched the football manager fantasy drafts, like PVP fantasy drafts before, knows that those matches can get out of hand super quickly. And they kind of did in two out of the three matches. One of the matches, Indonesia-England, was, was quite good. Um, and I don't know if that's necessarily like the best way to settle it in the final, but I understand that FIFA E was going for like that vintage esports feel where you get it, you know, it's like mono e mono, player versus player. I feel like long term having them play like one season with a club would probably be at least a better test to see what somebody's able to achieve in FM, but Fantasy draft gonna fantasy draft or maybe you fantasy draft and everybody plays everybody once and it's like a league thing. I I have no idea. What what, what would be better? It's probably you're probably not gonna be able to come up with a much better system than 
four teams fantasy draft out of the same pool, then play a home and away against, you know, one of the other teams, and then a home and away in the final, and boom, there you go. And if it's a blowout, it's a blowout. I played enough streamer showdowns uh, in those settings to know that it, you are also capable of having absolutely fantastically entertaining matches. The scores can just get out of hand because, I don't know, maybe it's the way that morale works in, in PvP football manager or something, but it can just feel like you're running uphill in the snow on a sheet of ice somehow. It, the, like, it, it, you, you lose control of a match incredibly quickly in PvP Football Manager. But the spectacle of the final. I mean, they had John Terry there. He was able to come and I interviewed him on the stream for a little bit. He was a super nice guy. Pretty soft-spoken guy, which I found really interesting. But very nice, very genuinely interested. Played a lot of Football Manager, Championship Manager back in the day and was fascinated by what was going on. Big Sam Allardyce, who was kind of very clearly there just to, you know, make an appearance and maybe say a few managerial things in the is part of the broadcast. But they had that. I mean, they had this big trophy lift. They had the the confetti coming down and the crescendo of the music to celebrate the title. It was incredibly well done. And while I, I feel like the tournament overlooked uh, a lot of the specific things that maybe fans of football manager would like to know over the course of that tournament. I tried to fill that void as best as best I could with streams and tweets and such. Uh, I, I think that the amount of investment and determination to make it something and just like seriously, just the amount of investment was a good sign. And all I hope, right, because I have no idea if it's ever going to happen again. Um, it's very clear that this was like a test event. I hope that it's able to happen again because I believe that as cool as this was, uh, as much as it snuck up on everybody and nobody had any idea what the hell was going on and everybody was trying to figure out how to cover it and figure out how everything was supposed to work and in some cases uh, people involved with it kind of learning about Football Manager and how it worked in the first place, um, which, you know, nothing against them, by the way. That's just all part of the process when you're dealing with like TV crew and whatever. Um, as much as all that was going on, I think it was already a good product. Um, I, I, it was a lot of fun. And I, I know there were some debates about like, well, the tactical variety. And there was a good tactical variety over the course of the tournament. Um, but I think the most important thing is that I, as somebody that had to bury my head in the sand watching the Football Manager World Cup, I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. It was entertaining to watch. I streamed over 10 hours a day for three straight days, and there were very few times in that stretch where there wasn't a lot going on, where I was kind of bored the vast majority of the time running that Red Zone-style broadcast. There was always something for me to click on to. Then, of course, on the final day, it's just the four teams on stage and the anthems and everything else. It's just kind of a surreal experience. I still can't believe uh, that it actually happened, that somebody, you know, took that much of an interest in Football Manager. And I have now waxed poetic about it for a little bit. So I'll leave you with this. I hope it happens again. And I, I think the most important thing is that it was entertaining and it was fun to watch uh, for me. And I'm assuming if it was entertaining and fun to watch for me, that it was entertaining and fun to watch for some other people too. And Indonesia won, by the way, deservedly so, dominated in the PvP format, uh, and, and took home the title for a nation whose language is not even in the game, by the way. Uh, but that was the Football Manager World Cup. Mind-blowing level of production, a lot of potential, and we'll see if it gets to happen again. I was just really happy uh, to be a part of it.